Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. While I'm continuing to do some experiments with the Mini Whip, it's proving to be quite an interesting tool to play with. Um, for example, this morning, here is a uh, sample of uh, the spectrum around 80 meters uh, with the Mini Whip here in the house. And uh, the top sample is uh, with my Ethernet networking in the house turned on and the bottom is with it turned off. Now, as you can see, Ethernet uh, is generating a lot of noise across the spectrum. And unfortunately, the harmonic relationships between the Ethernet carrier signals and uh, the RF spectrum places a lot of uh, birdies right across some of the amateur segments. So that'll be a subject for another video. Uh, eventually, I'll probably replace all the Ethernet cable in the house with the uh, Cat6 shielded cable, maybe this fall. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, the Mini Whip um, has a point on the board, and I'll bring a picture up here. You can see right up there in the active area, there's a solder point where you can add a short piece of wire um, to extend the uh, pickup area of the whip. Now, I, uh, I searched and searched for anybody writing an article um, or images or, or video on experimenting with using that, and I didn't find anything, so I thought, well, I'll do some experiments myself then. So uh, I set up a little test jig where I could experiment with uh, different lengths of wire uh, connected to that point on the mini whip to see what would happen. Uh, would it increase the sensitivity dramatically? Would it uh, swamp the amplifier with local broadcast noise? Um, is it a big enough improvement to make it worthwhile? What length of wire is ideal? You know, these are the questions I wanted to answer, and uh, I answered some of them. So let me uh, flip the camera around, and I'll show you my uh, test setup, and then uh, we'll do some measurements with it. All right, so here's the uh, Mini Whip mounted up on a board. And right there, I have soldered a tiny little piece of uh, copper wire as a loop that I can clip onto with this alligator clip. Now, the alligator clip is attached to a telescopic whip that I can extend. So I can measure a signal, I can clip on the uh, whip, measure the signal, I can extend the whip to varying lengths and see what happens with the signal. And I've got all that sitting up here upright on a board that's just sitting on a stand here in the house uh, so I can work with it and uh, vary things and see what we see. So let me fire up Cubic on the computer and hook this up and uh, we'll pull up some signals and we'll clip on the uh, uh, extension and vary its length and we'll see what we see. Alrighty, presently the uh, Mini Whip, uh, the extension is not connected. And I've run across some people chatting on 15.555 megahertz. Seems to be a casual conversation. Ah, they're in there. All right. I'll mute the audio, but you can still see the signal up here. I'm going to go and I'm going to clip on the uh, extension, which is not telescoped right now. So it's about, oh, four inches, five inches. Um, we'll be extending the end of the whip. Here we go. All right, there was a noise burst, and you can see a general increase in the background noise. Still a fairly good signal. All right, let's extend the whip a little bit. All right, now that's extended to about, uh, oh, about uh, two and a half feet. All 
Signal has uh, signal has come up a bit. All right, let's extend it all the way to uh, about uh, four feet. And there's about four foot now extended off the end of the mini whip. I don't know what those guys are. Anyway, um, so as you can see, the uh, background noise level has come up quite a bit. Um, the signal has not really improved all that much, but we've got a lot more noise, a much higher noise floor. So it seems like uh, there is definitely um, not a big advantage to putting a long extension on there, at least up at these frequencies. Uh, I'm going to collapse the uh, telescoping whip back down. Okay, now we're down to about uh, five inches again. And, uh, you know, I think that that's probably a sweet length, at least up here around 15 megahertz. So you can see the noise floor is down quite a bit compared to the signal. Now I'll disconnect the whip. All right, now we're back to just the uh, mini whip by itself without the extension. The noise floor came down just a little bit, but the signal also came down. So there seems to be an advantage to having some extension on the mini whip. All right, let's go down in frequency. We'll go down to uh, oh, kill that demodulator all right so there's five megahertz let's uh let's get down around 80 meters now oh, that's my ethernet let's find something that's the am broadcast band i'm gonna go down to uh, vlf area Okay, 450 kilohertz. Somewhere in here, there will be a uh, non-directional beacon from the Huntington Airport, which is not too far away. I'm not seeing it. Now, this is just with the mini whip by itself. Yep, bias is on. That's probably a, a, a artifact from one of the local AM broadcast stations. Let's see. The parking lot. Friday's basically the weekend. Yeah, that's a lower harmonic from one of the AM broadcast stations. Let me notch out the AM broadcast. There we go. And that harmonic went away. And here comes the noise floor up. Good. So now we got a better chance of finding that non-directional beacon. Uh, it's somewhere around 420, somewhere in there but I don't see it. All right, I'm gonna connect the whip back up. Okay, I have plugged in, or I've connected up the uh, extension. I don't see our non-directional beacon anywhere. Let me extend the whip again. I can see interference has definitely come up. Various noise sources. I'm not seeing the signal I'm looking for. I'm going to extend the whip all the way and see what happens to the noise floor.
well, I don't see any of the non-directional beacons, but I can see where these bands of interference have definitely come up in strength. Um, so I think the longer wire is an improvement at the lower frequencies. Let's go back up. Up around the 80 meter band. Yeah, I'm seeing lots of interference. Lots of noise. All right, I'm gonna go and collapse the whip. That brought our interference down. Hard to say. I'll disconnect it. Alright, now the extension is disconnected and it's just the mini whip itself. And signals came down quite a bit. It's hard to say exactly what the uh, um, benefit or not is. It, it seems to improve things up to a point. I thought I saw. I just turned off my uh, my uh, broadcast notch. I'm gonna go and reconnect the whip and extend it. Oof. Yeah, a lot more noise. All right, that is, obviously we don't have an AM broadcast station at 2.5 megahertz, so that is a spurious emission from one of the local broadcast stations getting in. Now that's with the, with the extension connected. I'm gonna collapse it now. Oh yeah, it dramatically reduced that, didn't it? Yep. All right, so it seems like adding a wire to the mini whip definitely um, improves its sensitivity on certain frequencies, but it looks like it just brings up noise on others. Uh, I think that a, a small extension of about uh, four or five inches might be advantageous. Uh, obviously the results are gonna be a lot different when the whip is up in the air. It's just easier to experiment with it now uh, down here but um, as we saw on the higher frequencies for sure uh, a little bit of an extension to it was an improvement and more of an extension to it didn't bring up signals it just brought up the noise floor so my impression is that you're probably going to see some advantage to adding a little bit of wire to it off that off that solder point on the end maybe five or six inches um, when I put it up uh, up on the roof I will probably start that way and I'll see how uh, how bad the broadcast interference is and I might remove it ultimately but I think a small extension is definitely an advantage I haven't seen anybody else testing this so I figured I'd just go ahead and film this for you guys so you can see what happens when you do add an extension to the mini whip um, I started gathering parts for the uh, external bias T box so I'll be able to bias it with 12 volts and I'm going to put a switch on there where I can switch on a 470 ohm resistor, which I've already measured, brings the bias voltage down from 12 to about 5 volts at the whip. So I'll have a low gain and a high gain setting um, when I power it that way. And uh, that will be for the installation up on the roof. So that should, uh, that should prove quite useful. 
Uh, so that'll be the next video in this series, and that's probably going to be at least a couple of weeks away because I need to get money ahead in the accounts before I can buy the parts I'll need. So stay tuned for that, and uh, I hope you found this uh, interesting. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.